everybody. Welcome to the Stock Car Spectacle. I'm Ian Jordson. I'm Mike Gamble. And I'm Nick Kinzel. And we just got done with a fantastic weekend of racing at Phoenix Raceway. But first off, we want to tell you guys that we just visited Ashland Hedden's racing shop this past week. The interview is up on YouTube now. You can see it and you can see their full shop. Guys, that was fun going there. Yeah. Really cool experience, awesome to see their race shop, see what they put together for the season. Um, Ashlyn and her dad Eric were awesome, really really fun to be around, really accommodating with us. Yeah, just overall unbelievable experience. Yeah, after seeing the shop, that is such a cool looking shop that they got going on in there, just everything that's in there, because he's got a couple of die, he got his own die cast case in there. He's got some signs up all over the wall. Yep. And then just seeing the car in person and the chassis was awesome. Just makes me really excited to get out to Grundy and start watching some racing and watching her kick some butt. Oh yeah, and they treated us like family oh, yeah. right oh, when we yeah. got there. Yeah, treated us to some brews, some burgers. It was a great time, guys. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, so now we got over with that. Let's go into our die cast of the week, boys. All right, so this is Atlanta race weekend, so I busted out the 2019 flash coat colored Kyle Larson McDonald's scheme that he did run in Atlanta last year. This was a Plan B sales, uh, Black Friday sale car that I purchased, one of like nine, so I just really liked it. Ever since I saw this car run on the racetrack last year, I was like, this is a car that I want to get. And it, it fits perfectly going into Atlanta. It's a really good racetrack for Kyle Larson. I feel confident for Kyle Larson this weekend. So, yeah, I just overall with the McDonald's on and everything, with the flash coat, I think it can't, It turned out pretty good. I'd say so. One of 87 cars Nick bought on Black <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, for my die cast of the week, going to his home track, I went with the number nine, Chase Elliott, Hooters, Chevrolet Camaro. One of my favorite paint schemes yeah. they run. Um, he's going to be running on his truck this weekend as he yeah. pulls double duty. That's look good. Yeah. So, thought no better time to bring out the Hooters car than this weekend alone. So. Oh, yeah. All right, so I brought in my uh, 2018 Kevin Harvick Atlanta win. Uh, absolutely dominated that race. Man. Uh, that was the day before my 21st birthday. <laughs> and uh, my sister-in-law has a birthday the day before me. So we were at dinner when this race was going on. And I was not the happy camper. I had to put it on my phone. And uh, my fiance Abby, kept bugging me to turn it off and talk with everyone. But I was like, well, look who's in the lead right now. I really can't do this. So, uh, yeah, that, that was pretty awesome. What oh, yeah. a great win and, you know, took off for his oh eighth win season. Yeah. That was unbelievable. <laughs> that was just Dominating one of those races season. where it was just like, can it just end already? This, yeah. There's no way this guy loses unless he blows an engine or something. He ain't going to lose. Throw the checkers right now. He's got like a 12-second lead. Mm -hmm. Come on. But, yeah, just utter domination oh, that yeah. whole season for him. Was. I mean, that next Atlanta right next to Phoenix is one of his best tracks. Yeah. He yeah. may not have the wins there but damn I think he's led the most laps there ever since he started his oh, career right. well, he's got one of the most historic wins at Atlanta yep. going back to 2001 his, year, his, yep. year, his first Gordon. career win yeah yeah. I mean, yeah one of the most iconic wins in NASCAR so that history track, yep. that track definitely means something to him I believe after that race he he uh, did a post victory lap with the holding the number three out, out of the window net I think after that was that after the race. 2018 one I believe it was after that race I, I'm not too sure on that. I'm not entirely sure either. One, but of, one of those, that, no, it had to have been because that was his last Atlanta win. So that's that's when he did it. I'm almost positive. Okay, we'll right. have to look into right. a yeah. video review yeah. on this. Yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll have like you know a caption up like yes he did or no, no he, he didn't. Did. And we'll put up the picture. One of we those have... Atlanta races he did do it in. Yeah, we we're not really sure. So <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now let's dig into our Xfinity Series review. All right, so this is the LS Tractor 200 at the Phoenix Raceway. I wasn't looking too good early because Kyle Busch nabbed the pole and his number 54 Twix Cameron looked pretty good. And his Twix Supra, my bad, but it, that was a good looking race car nonetheless. And then, but Kyle kind of faded back a little bit to start this one off because Justin Allgaier was looking real good early. He won stage one and Junior Motorsports wound up sweeping the stages as Noah Gregson went on to win stage two. Yep. And uh, so Junior Motorsports was having a good day up until lap 144. Another rough pass for Daniel Hemrick as it just keeps going on and on and on. It's never going to end for him, I guess. That really sucks. He gets loose, collects four other cars and a wreck in turn two. His day is pretty much done. It's just, uh, I, don't even, uh, I don't even know, man. I, I don't know what to say anymore. I'm running out of excuses here. Uh, but So after that, Joe Gibbs Racing got the win. 
but it wasn't with Kyle Busch. No. Brandon Jones impresses in the end, passes Kyle Busch, and goes on to win. Got to tell you, I didn't see that one coming. No, no. not at all. <laughs> no. uh, but, yeah, so that marks. But Xfinity regulars have won all four of the races so far this season, something we're really not used to seeing. Yeah. We'll be lucky if, like, uh, it was four different drivers, too. We'll be luck- we were lucky in the past if two or three Xfinity regulars visited Victory Lane. So really cool to see there. But the action wasn't over after the checker flag flew because <laughs> there was a fight on pit road between Bassett and Brandon Brown. Well, the Bassett bros. The Bassett yeah. bros, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was nuts. So I just think that Phoenix is the place to fight because we saw it last year with Suarez and McDowell. I guess fights breed fights. And yeah, and we saw it with Boyer and yeah, Gordon. Boyer and Gordon. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> We're yeah. talking about that one all weekend. Yeah. This, this, if, if you're looking to fight, I mean, the Phoenix Raceway pit road is the place to be, I guess. It's yeah, to something with wrestling. The heat. Yeah, right I can say that's, what, that's just what yeah. they should do, or put like a UFC octagon, let these boys go at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So the updated points after Phoenix, Harrison Burton still on top. Uh, we got Chase Briscoe, Austin Sindri, Brandon Jones, and Ross Chastain. Your top five in uh, Xfinity Series points. And so for the lightning round question I have this week, last week it was time to shut up the Harrison Burton haters after he went to victory lane at Auto Club. So after this race, is it time to shut up the Brandon Jones haters? I don't lean quite as hard as I did with the Harrison Burton haters, um, solely because everyone was jumping all over Harrison Burton before we really even saw what he could do in an Xfinity car. It was everybody already predetermining that he's going to fail. He's going to not live up to what people expect of him, and we're not seeing that. He's still the points leader at this point in the season. I really can't say that I think uh, that's the same situation with Brandon Jones. Brandon Jones has been in top equipment in the Xfinity Series for a long time now and has struggled mightily. Not just a little bit, he struggled mightily. So to see him finally get the wins, I wouldn't say it's time to shut the haters up. I would say it's about damn time. Yeah, honestly, I agree, but... I also agree that it could be time to shut the haters up because Brandon Jones has been fast this year. His pit crew cost him last week in Auto Clux. Remember, he right. dominated that yeah. race. But, yeah, it's a little too late for him, but uh, it's a really good start to the season for him with getting that win right off the bat. Yeah. Because last year at this point, we were we were all sitting here like, how does this kid still have a ride because he just wasn't getting finishes. Yeah. Now the wins are starting to show up for him a little bit, so we'll probably see some of that hate talk. Simmer down a little bit because I think he's in for a solid season this year. Yeah. Um, I still don't know about Brandon Jones yet. I mean, the guy has been racing full time. Well, he's been racing since 2015, but full time since 16. And it took him all the way up until last year to get his first win. And let's be honest, he's been with really good equipment his entire Xfinity career. I wouldn't say that RCR car was all that competitive yeah. to what they well, to what they had. Their Xfinity program out. is good, but still, he's been with Joe Gibbs Racing since 2018. Yeah. And it took him this long to actually get a win in his, like, you know, his top fives and top tens have not really been that good at all. So... I still don't know about him. Maybe, like, if he wins more this year, yeah, he's going to well, shut me up. I think this is opportunity proven for him with the big three being out. It's time for him to step up. So, uh, right now, I'm defending him, and we'll just have to see what happens as the season rolls on. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. All right, so now let's get into the cup race. It was the Fan Shield 500. It was the first race with low downforce and high horsepower. That's the way it should be. That's the way it should be, boys. (laughs) Uh, Chase Elliott was on the pole, just edging out Kevin Harvick. Kevin Harvick started second. And on lap 65, we had Denny Hamlin getting loose, collecting Brad Kozlowski and Ryan Blaney. Ryan Blaney was done for the day, boys. Yeah, bad luck continues for the 12 team. Uh, Just... You can't write this yeah, stuff. He yeah. hey, dropped least, from at first least, to six. And at least this yeah. time he didn't lead a lot of laps and get our hopes up to yeah. have that happen. He just... He just had it happen right away. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> I'll give you that. This is the first race of the year I watched and didn't think, uh, damn, he's going to win yeah, this Yeah, like, yeah. You, you didn't have to panic over there for a little bit. He, he gave yeah. it to you early this week. Yeah. And then uh, Brad Kozlowski, he didn't really have any damage coming out of that wreck, so yeah, he was I still able he to would, go he, I thought he was looking bad coming out of that wreck the first time yeah. I saw yeah. it. Yeah, but it worked out well. <laughs> uh, and we had some really good racing between Kevin Harvick and Chase Elliott, and then we had Happy Harvick to win stage one. Uh, yeah, they yeah. put on a good 20, 25 lap battle there at the end oh, of the yeah, stage. Yeah. That's those two were definitely the yeah. fastest yeah. on the track. All yeah, day. they were the class of the field. They mm. had the best two cars all race long. So it was a lot of fun yeah, watching they were the just battle trading. for the lead. And they literally were trading. They were trading yeah. back and forth. 
one lap Kevin Harvey, and then Chase Elliott gets them back, and then yeah, right. Was, that's great. why I love this freaking yeah. package, boys. This package on this track is such a great combination because this is what you got to see, and with the dog leg and the different oh. lines, you saw crossover moves left and right. You had guys setting people up by taking the dog leg versus staying back on the straights and trying to get the run around. You had so many different options for passing here yep. too. Mm -hmm. If this is a precursor of what this is going to look like in the championship race, Total. we're in for a sign me up. Yeah. 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 Oh be, yeah, it's be a good race. And then, like I said, Kozlowski didn't have a lot of damage coming out of that wreck, so he rebounded and he got the win stage two. Talk about a rebound. Yeah, yeah. no kidding. My dad was happy. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then uh, cautions, breeding cautions in the final stage, boys. It, was just, it just felt endless <laughs> at that point. <laughs> uh, Redick. God, he looked impressive, he looked, boys. He looked good until his tire gave up on him. But yeah, yeah. running in the top five at a, at a difficult track and his first time in the cup car at Phoenix. Nonetheless, in RCR equipment, it was pretty cool to see. He was running up at second at one point. It's just a big bummer that he had to cut a tire uh, hitting the wall ending his day. Well, yeah. I mean, he's got to live up to his sponsor. He can only get up to second. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, lap 284, we have Martin Truex Jr., Eric Amarola, and Jimmy Johnson gotta, tangling in turn one. I got to tell you, I, I was very happy to see that. I was not yeah. mad to see that one go yeah. down. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, I don't think anyone was really <laughs> sad in the garage that day. No, and I, I'm getting really tired of Martin Wynex here week in and week out. I just so. want to know what that radio is yeah. like. <laughs> we oh, yeah. heard the interview. Yeah. Well, we, we should probably hear it on uh, Race Hub tomorrow. <laughs> I just feel so bad for James Small. <laughs> yeah. He was for having to put up with him, man. <laughs> That's almost a. He's almost getting as bad. As Kyle Busch with Adam Stevens. Kyle Busch likes to drop a lot more F bombs than Martin Truex does, but Martin <laughs> Truex just whines like a little teenage girl, man. Like, we're here to race cars, man, not not all this. Oh, I don't yeah. Know. I feel bad for you, James and Clayton. <laughs> <laughs> and then lap 311, we get Ricky Stenhouse and John Hunter Nemechek getting into a wreck, setting up an overtime finish, boys. And then Joey Logano holding off Kevin Harvick to get his second win of the season. Uh. I was heartbroken. Yeah, <laughs> I man. thought Happy Kevin Harvick, Harvick had, had the fastest car all day. It's just because the lane he was in, he wasn't able to get going. Yeah. yeah. When Ryan Blaney uh, got taken out early, I was just hoping, man, please let Kevin win this race so if somebody could have a good day. Yeah, right. It's just <laughs> anybody yeah. but Joey Legano, man. <laughs> yeah. Come on. So, but yeah. uh, what a race, boys. Yeah. That was awesome. That package really proved to be great. Right. Well, like he said it best. If this is what we're getting into, if this is what our championship race is going to look like in November, because... Before, when they first announced that Phoenix was hosting, I was like, oh, God, because the last year's races at Phoenix were terrible. The last couple of years' yeah. Yeah. races at Phoenix were terrible. But if we're with this package, it's going to put on a hell of a championship absolutely, race. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And one thing before we kind of move on, I do want to say, man, props to that 22 team and Joey Logano for the way they executed today. Yeah. You know yeah. what? They persevered, persevered, persevered. They had the, the uncontrolled tire penalty. Yeah. Yeah, they right. had a jack failure on pit road as well. Mm -hmm. And if you go back and watch that film, they look so well coached. Jack doesn't work calmly, but timely. Turns around, gets the other Jack, gets it right under the car. Yep. If they panic there, any little thing, oh, he yeah. loses two, three spots on pit road, and we'd have a different winner. Right. That's that's what breeds winning right there. Not everything's going to go your way while yeah, we get a week it. out. Yeah, things didn't go their way for the 22 team. They just kept their nose to the grindstone, kept battling, and look where they ended up. Need a smart crew. Yeah, it's days yeah. like this where that builds a championship team right there. Right. Races like this, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but on a, on a good note, Harvick is the only driver with top tens and all four races this year, yeah. which is pretty pretty cool to see. Yeah, that, that is really nice to see. Very consistent this year so far. I like it. I know he looks at that and he's probably like, oh, that's okay, but he, he we know he wants to win. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we want to be locked into the playoffs. Right. So you want to get that lock early. He's right. got a little bit of the Ryan Blaney going on right now, where, man, really looking good, looking like one of, if not the best cars on the track week in and week out, but just don't have the checkered flags to show yeah, for right. it. The closer hasn't yeah. closed yet. I'm yeah. sure he will soon. Oh, I'm, I yeah. mean, it's early. Yeah. It's going to happen. Boys. I don't think either one of us are worried no. yet. No, no, I'm not at all. <laughs> so let's look at updated points after Phoenix. Uh, Kevin Harvick is the leader. And then we got Joey Logano right behind him with uh, behind him by one point. Uh, Chase Elliott's in third, Bowman in fourth, and Jimmy Johnson is in fifth. And Blaney's dropped back to sixth. Still after yeah. four after four races, if you told me Jimmy Johnson would be in the top five in points, I. You, you, I would think yeah. you're crazy. And I'll hey. be quite honest, I don't think it's going to last. I look at him and the 88, Alex Bowman. Have both, both had really good starts of the year, but I don't think you're going to see them stay that high up in the yeah, points Bowman's as struggled. we keep going Bowman here. struggled. I think he finished like 20th in this race yeah. or something like that. Yeah, well, only time can tell. 
So let's dig into my lightning lightning round question. Uh, is this Joey Logano's year to absolutely dominate? He's already got two wins. Is he going to dominate, or is he going to flop later in the season? Well, I think days like today, days like yesterday, really proved that this team could be a championship team. And we really haven't seen that breakout of Joey Logano winning like six or seven races in a season. I think that Penske nailed it with this pit crew swap for them. I think him and Paul Wolf are going to work really well together, mm -hmm. championship driver, championship crew chief. I, I don't see why they can't do it. It's just going to be on them to execute week in and week out. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it could very well be a, a great season for Joey Logano with five, six, seven wins. I mean, he's won two races already this year, and in neither race did he have even close to the best car. He, he was the third, fourth, maybe fifth best car yeah. in his first win, yeah. and you could probably say the same thing about this past Sunday's race as well. Find way they find done. ways to get it done. They find ways through adversity. But there's also another way to look at it, too. Because, you know, we're only so far into the season, we only have such a small sample size. Right, right. At some point, the luck is going to start to turn around for some of these other drivers. So when do those tables start to turn into the other uh, other way? Maybe, maybe you know, some things start to fall for Ryan Blaney. Kyle Busch becomes Kyle Busch again. Kevin Harvick gets some things to go his way. Chase Elliott gets hot. There's a lot of different things that can happen. I think it's uh, really early in the season, but if you're Joey Logano or a Joey Logano fan, you got to love what you've seen so far. Yeah, I mean, he had two exactly. wins all of 2019, and then the first four races he already has, those he already matched last year's totals. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. All right, so I think that'll do it for our Phoenix review. So for the Stock Car Spectacle, I'm Ian Jordson. I'm Mike Gamble. I'm Nick Kinzel. Guys, make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you can listen to us on Spotify, Anchor, and uh, several other podcast platforms. And make sure to follow our friends at Ashland Headens Racing. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to watch shows later this week.